Well, the whole <laughs> series is about destiny. And uh, yes, we move things on, I would say. Uh, and uh, the, the beginning of season four is their darkest hour so far. Um, I, I, you know, I think I think we know what their their, their destiny is, mm -hmm. and they're 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 moving towards it. Things move on quite a bit in season four. Um, and, uh, it's uh, I think um, I think each season we've um, upped our game. If you understand what I mean, we've we've moved on, and uh, I think the end of of season three was very very strong, and our intention was to. Instead of dropping back a bit, giving the audience a breather, we thought, no, we're going to take it up. Because you know where it's going. By the end of season yeah. three, it's such a clear ending. I mean, and you know, finally you, you know where Morgana is. So you know how season four has got to start. You know, and with the darkest hour being before the dawn, you, you kind of get a feeling of, of what they're trying to do with season four. I mean, it is vast, it is filmic, it's huge, and it, it's bigger than we've ever done before. And, and what's really nice actually about this year as well is that with the, with the Knights of the Round Table, the cast feels bigger and it feels very ensemble, you know, and, and, and there's a, a feeling that you're, season four for me really feels like you're starting to tell the story of Arthur being king, Guinevere being queen, Merlin being a sorcerer. We're starting to get on that road. I mean, I don't know where we're going to get there, but you really start to see the hints of where they're going to end up. And I think that's what season four Yeah, for I think me characters does. really grow up, uh, and that's great. That one of the things that we really enjoyed is where we started with all the characters and seeing them uh, mature. But uh, I think the stakes in, in season four uh, are that much greater and it is really a moment for all the characters to um, to really show themselves and, um, and they don't disappoint. <laughs>
far more than season one and season two. It is an ongoing thread. And you started to get that in season three, and season four completely continues on from that. It is season three and season four are a direct continuation more than I think season yeah. one and season two. Yeah. And between I think the, the two. pace just, it, yeah, yeah it just, it, it's just building and building now. Yeah, I mean, it's like being on a train. It it's a very fast moving train. Yeah. And, and there is no stopping it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a day off since November. <laughs> I think well, you, the, the, the legend is the legend, so you, you, know, you, you can't go against that, but we've always subverted uh, expectations, played with them, and so we want to give people uh, you know, all, the, all the iconic moments, but in a slightly different way for a modern audience. Um, so that anybody who knows the legend is constantly surprised and you're giving you're constant references to, to uh, various things, whether it's the Lady in the Lake, whether it's Excalibur, and just, and just coming across that in a different way. So that's, that's, we look for all the moments that are there and then we think, how can we do them in our own way? Um, so that they're, if you don't know the legend, there's, those moments are still exciting. Uh, and if you do, you go, oh God, I know what's coming, I can see it. And, and so that's, that's the fun. And that's what makes the show work. That even if you are the most, you know, familiar with the legends as anybody on the planet, that Merlin will still surprise you. You can still sit down and go, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's what makes it a great show, you know? And, and, and I think that's what's made it so popular. So don't expect anything for season four because you won't <laughs> You should tell us what to expect. Oh, it's never going to happen. <laughs> Where is the fun in that? And then you'll sit down and be like, oh. I mean, season four uh, yeah, is, sure. is vast. I mean, it is filmic. It's yeah. epic. It feels like one of those sort of old epic movies, you know, fantasy genre like Willow, and, you know, Krull, which I love. But you know what I mean? Those type yeah. of, you know, big stories. I mean, it's funny this year as well. In the first few seasons, we used to shoot season, a lot in the studio, a lot on sets. Whereas this year, we're on location a lot more. We're out, we've used Wales so much more in the countryside. So everything feels more open, it feels bigger. We've used a lot of castles, we've used far less in the yeah. studio actually. We're yeah. out much more and it gives it a more filmic quality. It also means that we spend most of our time in cars and buses and That's trains. Sure, and rain. You don't. <laughs> I have a constant beef with these guys of like, they write a scene of Morgana is walking through, hooded through forest in rain, and when they're writing it, they're in their kitchen, with a cup of tea, and they're all cozy, and then I'm in a dress, in Wales, in March, and it's raining, and I'm just like... <laughs> but you look fantastic, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is it, this is like, you know, Julian, the, the producer's like, you know, the get up, we're about to film on location, and it's like raining, cats and dogs, it's awful, and the first AD rings up and goes, okay, it's, it's really bad weather, you know, I'm worried, and, and Julian goes, no, no, I can make that work. That's gonna look great. <laughs> and then there's everybody in wet weather gear and I'm like this, going, oh, God. And she's like, yeah, no, that's gonna look great. Katie, you're cold? Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Evil men. <laughs> if you had told me, I mean, I think part of the reason why I managed to do it was because I never actually believed that I would. I never, because if you think of where you start as, you know, a lowest of a low costume assistant, to then be on one of the most popular shows in England and something that's, you know, on worldwide. Had I thought that was the journey I was going to take, I, I would have gotten scared out of my mind and would never have done it. I, I just kind of think I was moseying along and, and, and things presented themselves and I just went and went. And, and even with Merlin, when I signed on, I could never have imagined that it would be as loved as it is. You know, I, I, I pretty much thought that most people in England would watch it and then you start to see the territories fall and, and you're, you just can't wrap your head around it. So I think the fact that I wasn't expecting it, kind of, <laughs> but it was a, quite a, a vast and long, very fun journey from where I started to now where I, I am. I hope you can still keep going. Yeah, I think we, you know, without giving too much away, I think uh, <laughs> things move on. And um, uh, yeah. I think that one of the phrases that we, we use in, in Merlin is, is for the love of Camelot. And there's, there's, there's a, a lot of love between all the characters. Yeah. And uh, that's at the heart of the show. But in terms of uh, Arthur and Gwen, we, we know where that story is going to go ultimately. But we continue to play with the audience 
and um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's like a lot of love affairs. The moments when you think they've, you know, things are really progressing, and then, oh dear, something comes between them. So I wonder what that could be. Hmm? I wonder who <laughs> that, that could be. be. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> So, I mean, I think the best analogy for season four is actually is the train analogy. I mean, it is quick, it is fast-paced, and all the relationships sort of deal with that, you know, everything is moving and fast, and things are happening very quickly yeah. all the time, and I think the relationships will reflect that, and, and they reflect those sort of events and, and the feeling of, of, you know, momentum. Yeah, I'd agree. I, uh, and uh, um, Gwen's not here, Angel, uh, but she has a good season. She does. She's, she's, there are, there are she does. some uh, very good episodes for her, and um, I think you know I, I I'm looking forward to personally. Obviously, I I write quite a few of the episodes, um, but I don't think I've ever looked forward as much to uh, to seeing something because you're starting to see. Oh. The, the fruition of everything that yeah. they've laid down for three years. You're yeah. really starting to see the seeds of. God, how many like plant analogies can I fit in that sentence there? <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean. Yeah. You're really starting to see the beginnings of you know dawn. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. Going right back to our first question. You know. <laughs> see how I did that. <laughs> yeah. See how I did Fantastic. that. For Merlin. Well, you know, he, he's he's. Got other things to deal with. Well, he's yeah, he's under a lot of pressure in in, in this particular mm -hmm. series. I think that uh, you know you've got you've got uh, you know, he's come to terms with his uh, his relationship with magic, um, but there's always that desire I think for for him to be able to tell more people, and that's a, a, exactly. a big yeah a big pressure in in season four. And um, how that affects his relationship with Arthur. I think we'll, we'll play with that a little bit. Um, he's growing up, really, as they, all the characters are. And uh, looking back to, to season one, where he felt that uh, he was just a freak, and now he realizes that you know, everything, that the, uh, the future of, of Camelot really is resting on his shoulders in this. In this season, yeah, <laughs> and you don't you don't do anything to upset that. Do don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started on why this is all Merlin's fault. Because I believe Morgana is blameless, and seriously, seriously, I have a whole thing worked out of why she is well, the victim. <laughs> I have some sympathy. With that, you know, all the sympathy is not her fault. She's misguided. She's <laughs> had a she's had a hard time. It's like Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, she is Darth Vader. Coupled with the Emperor, because she's the best. <laughs> I could do a Star Wars analogy all day, so no <laughs> problem. <laughs> yeah, Millie is back. Yeah. Millie is back. And without giving too much away. Without. No, right. you know. Morgus <laughs> or, or yes. is back. We are very lucky to have, well, I'm personally very happy to have Millie back. Uh, yes, I think we you know, yeah, she's brilliant. And I think. For, for my character, Morgana, the relationship she has with Morgos is possibly one of the most important ones for her character, and, and it's, it's an, a good feeling to have her back, you know, and fun as well. Yeah, but as I said earlier, I thought I, you know, I used to think she was, she was really bad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then... Her little sister came along. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't got learned nothing. everything. And then got better. Yeah. She is Uther's daughter, so if you imagine... Bit of more ghost, bit of ether. Can you imagine how bad that is? <laughs> so good. <laughs> I think the interesting thing is not so much how Morgana would react, because I think we'd know uh, how Morgana. I think yeah. it's how Arthur would Arthur, react, yeah. because I think Arthur will feel completely betrayed by her. And I think, in, you know, for Morgana, she this is all part of you know her greater plan. She is for the greater good, and this is this is how she believes. And, and you know, Arthur is just for her another person who would have denied her had he found out who she was. So I think the interesting thing if Morgana and Arthur meet is not Morgana, because she's going to behave how you would expect her to behave, and how she has done at that point. I think the really interesting thing about that meeting is how Arthur behaves, because I think he's really, really destroyed by what Morgana has done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
and also finding out that she is in fact his sister. Which yeah. she found out not only is she his sister, but she's tr she's taken the throne, she's magical, and she's going to try and kill him. You know, do you know what I mean? Yes. This is all on the same moment that Arthur found all of that out. Can you imagine what that's like to deal with? Whereas Morgana had a, a much longer time to deal with it. And, and also, you've got to remember that Morgana is incredibly clever. She's much better. <laughs> <laughs> and very good. She's just better. She's just the best. I'm sure Bradley says this out here, Colin, but no, I'm right. <laughs> well, Another comparison uh, would be uh, Magneto of X Men, uh, uh, a man who is fighting for magic. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, okay, yeah, actually, no, I don't want to wear the sea helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Michael Fassbender could carry that one off. <laughs>